All right, still doing some prep work to make the soundboard uh, for this piano, which the piano's not here. One of the reasons I'm making this video is I got time to kill as the piano has been taken away to get the case refinished. So I got like uh, five weeks or so to get all this thing ready, get this thing ready to uh, put the new soundboard in when it comes in. So right now I'm getting ready to do the, the most fun part of, of this stuff. Which I like, which is making this bridge cap. And the bridge cap is normally done in three pieces, like I have here. This is, and but the interesting part about what I like to do is normally this cap is is just you just make a, a line there and you you do what's called a butt joint. You just butt this piece of wood up against that one, and they're glued down. They're glued together, but. If you know anything about woodworking, gluing, gluing end grain to end grain like this is, I'm not going to say it's not a, a good joint because these rarely fail. If you look at old pianos, I think I've seen one that had a slight separation to it. So it's not about making a stronger or a better joint. It's just my favorite word, integration. A What I like to do is make the cap integrated by by this, making a finger joint what's called a finger joint. And now that I've taken this apart, you can see that these three pieces are a little, uh, just a reminder to me to how to do this. But, uh, where was I? Oh, anyway, I, this is the jig that I made that is really the best thing I've ever made in my life. The only real, the only real innovation I made, where I used to work, they had a shaper. He, the guy had a shaper, which is like a giant, uh, router table, giant expensive router table, but I have designed this thing to go on a, a drill press and you just mount this thing to a drill press and this these little fingers come out through here and I, I know drill presses are not designed to take a lot of push force on here that's why you need a heavy duty uh, shaper but the way I've designed this with this table is that you don't put a lot of pressure on there. You put this thing in here, it's not cut yet, but when it is, I'll put it in here. And this whole tray pushes against, pushes against here. So I'm not pushing a lot of force against the spindle on the drill press. So the only pressure is coming from this piece of wood as it passes. This is cutting into the wood and it, yeah, yeah, it's pressing on the, uh, drill press a little bit but I mean I do this very rarely and this is a sharp this bit gets used you know four times a year at the most so it's sharp it uh, this thing is very protective if this thing ever got if anything ever did decide to get crazy it's not gonna kill me this is held down with some screws and and stuff like that so I feel safe when I'm doing this and and I end up even though I am altering the way the pianos was originally made it, I don't feel like anybody is even going to catch me doing it first of all I think I don't think it's it's I don't think it's harming the piano in any way if any way it, it may be helping you know just to integrate these three pieces of wood better than I don't want to say better than the original, but anyway, I, there I, I may have said it. So, right, I'm going to do right now is these are way too thick. So, uh, thanks to the pandemic, I don't have a lot of work. And my uh, electric planer, I had a handheld electric plane that I would do this with normally, but that broke, burned out. So I'm going to use these things called hand tools, which... 40 years ago, I used to go to flea markets around here, and I'm sure I didn't pay more than $15 for this plane, or 15 or 20 bucks for this plane. And this is a new one that I did buy for the final kind of thing. Thank you, Lee Nielsen, for making these beautiful tools. So I did buy, I do have one new one in this, uh, this conglomeration of old tools. So... What else? A little rant about hide glue. This model piano a lot of times has a failure. I don't know why. I haven't analyzed why it happens so much. But a lot of times, this is called the, the base bridge cap. And a lot of times it comes loose 
up here in the top and it lifts up. Now the guy fixed this before used epoxy to glue it back down which is okay except that when I pulled this off hide, the beauty of hide glue is it doesn't it does it doesn't do well with bangs or how can I say it with shocks and you can when you pop off something like this with hide glue it comes off like it did originally until it got to where the epoxy is and then it pulled up some wood on the edge of this thing and it was enough of a big enough gouge that fell off that I didn't want to use something like this wood filler which is excellent stuff and you could get away with it if you want to get away with things but I didn't I took a piece of maple here this is a scarf joint and I I just planed a flat surface on here I wish I could I should have showed more of this but it's kind of a a lengthy you know it, it takes a long time over a course of uh, two days or something to do this and it's but anyway the upshot is this is this is a new piece of wood glued on here and this new um, the new cap We'll glue onto there, and we'll be, uh, you know, we're back to where we started from. This one, you can see that this one is taller. I'm not going to plane much off of this because it's not much taller than the original, which is, that's an important aspect of the piano. This is like a guitar almost, where this is the bridge, and the strings are deflected by the bridge. And the amount they're deflected is very important to the sound. How much you're pushing down on that soundboard, how much the strings are pressing down on it is pretty important and a critical area. I am going to use this stuff to fill these little holes. This isn't big enough to stuff any kind of, to do any kind of um, dowel or anything in there. So I'm just going to swipe some of this stuff in there. Don't tell anybody I, that I did do, I did use some wood putty in this thing, but it's okay. We'll survive and the ribs have been roughed out and they're all ready to go right here's another discussion about woodworking when I get the new panel um, I don't know if you can see this or not but I rough these out these ribs sit up there on that shelf uh, when I'm not while they're just uh, acclimating or whatever you want to call it getting ready to use and they Here's what a piece of wood, a fresh piece of wood looks like, this spruce looks like, and here's what it looks like after it sits around for months. I don't know what, you, some people call that oxidation, I don't know what you call it, but that's not the best surface to glue to a brand new soundboard to glue this on there. So I'm not even going to plane this surface now, this glue surface now and then let it sit around for two or three weeks even. I'm going to wait until I'm just about ready to rib the board, glue these on, and then I, I will plane this, rough out these little scallops on here. I like to rough these out right before I do it, and then glue it on, and then I do the final kind of, you know, what you notice, this contour. I do that after it's all glued on and together, and I can kind of think, I'd like to think that I uh, tune the soundboard because this is a very uh, a very important part of the the way the soundboard works. As you can tell, if you know anything about wood, also this is like a joist. It's like a uh, this is a support structure, and so obviously a thicker piece of wood, the pressure on this thing is going up, going this way. What would be down in the piano? So if this was thick all the way up to here. This wood, this soundboard would be much uh, stronger, I guess is the best way to, to say it. It would be stronger, it would be stiffer, it would be harder to push down. Well, you really want to find a balance when you're making these things of how flexible this is, how much this weighs, how flexible it is, because you want it to vibrate. You want this to vibrate. If it's too stiff to vibrate, it's not going to sound right. And a lot of this, I'm, I'm talking out of my you-know-what because I, don't, I didn't study these things. I learned this from a master craftsman who did study these things and, and handed me a recipe uh, on what to do. So I'd like to think that I tap test the soundboard and really analyze it with a computer and it tells me exactly how to scallop these things, but it, it's not true. But I do do that afterwards just to make it look nice. So anyway... 
like I said, I'm just blathering on because I got another uh, five weeks to kill, and I, I don't want to finish this. I still got a glue. I do glue toothpicks into these holes, old style, old school, and that takes me forever to do. Even though I can sit and watch TV and do that, I don't know why. For some reason, it's it takes me forever to glue those things in. Because the rest of this is fun, and that is not exactly what I call fun. So anyway, I think I've shown it, blathered on for long enough today about this stuff. Oh, well, yeah, here's some sundry stuff. I found two of these machine-made or store-bought ones of these buttons. I, I've been making them lately by just drilling these out and then cutting this off and, and shaping these, making them myself. But I found these two. I might just use those. Um, so I guess instead of uh, continuing this, I should start thinning these things out a little bit and get to work. I don't know. Maybe I'll find something else to waste some time with.